Should Brandon stay? I mean, we've talked about this extensively yes, about should, how we think he should be fired. Him already. Will he be fired? No. Have you ever wanted a podcast that did it all? Sports, politics, world events. Well, you have come to the right place because you are listening to CNC Talks. Hello, I'm Colin. And I'm Charlie. Welcome to the CNC Talks podcast. We're on episode 30 of season two. Just a reminder, as you do every week, we release every Wednesday, and we talk about politics, world events, and sports. We will not be releasing this Wednesday. I had uh, I got sick over the weekend. We were not able to record at a regular time. It's currently Wednesday, September 20th, at about 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. Yeah, and Charlie, this was this was a big news week. We have so much to talk about on this show. We'll be talking about the upcoming government shutdown, military nominees finally maybe getting through the Senate, Hunter Biden, the United Auto Workers Union, a whole bunch of other stuff about so, several individuals in Congress, um, busy sports section as well. But start right now, Charlie, with that upcoming government shutdown. Yeah, the, an agreement needs to be made very soon before the government does shut down otherwise several a lot of social programs will be non-functional and a lot of government jobs will not be being paid i we continue to hope that those people will continue to work anyway if a government shutdown does happen it's crucial that this gets done but no agreement has been made yet and that is because i believe the freedom caucus still is refusing to agree to a deal on that yeah, so let's talk about this a little bit because I have some thoughts on Freedom Caucus and Kevin McCarthy and that whole dynamic. And the situation's very fluid, could be completely different when this episode's released versus when we're recording it now here Wednesday night. Um, but it's they they do not have a plan. They're unable to govern. Uh, they tried to pass the defense spending bill, and uh, which really they were just trying to open debate on the defense spending bill which is it, it's the most conservative defense spending bill in history and still McCarthy couldn't get the votes to do that it failed 212 to 214 with four sorry five republicans joining democrats in voting against the bill and McCarthy called this vote without knowing whether this bill would pass and that's kind of politics 101 that you do not put a bill on the floor for a vote if you do not if you're not 100 percent sure that it's going to pass so mccarthy failed there and well mccarthy's saying it's kind of hard to pass things with such a slim majority he only has a five seat majority it's so hard to pass things well let me tell you from 2021 to 2022 the 117th congress passed uh, they also had a five-seat Democratic majority, Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, five-seat majority, same majority as McCarthy has now. They passed more than any Congress in modern history. Whether, whether you agree with what they did or not, it is indisputable that they had a, the most successful term in terms of getting stuff done. They passed the American Rescue Plan. That was that huge COVID relief package. The Inflation Reduction Act, which was the huge climate and uh, and healthcare and et cetera uh, bill. Uh, they passed the CHIPS Act. Uh, they passed the PACT Act. They passed gun reform. Uh, they, pa- they protected gay marriage. They passed the bipartisan infrastructure bill and some and electoral count reform, all with a tie in the Senate and a five-seat majority in the House. McCarthy, also a five-seat majority in the House. They and he especially has passed nothing and they have no plan for a budget it's they have 10 days as of when we're recording this to get a budget passed uh before the government shuts down and they do not have a plan so and they're trying to pass a continuing resolution which is kind of a short-term solution just to keep the government open for maybe a few weeks or even a, a week at a time they can't even pass one of those because the freedom caucus is actively trying to shut down the government with the sole purpose of making Kevin McCarthy 
look bad, which shows you that that entire party is incapable of governing because they want, it's not even they're trying to make Democrats look bad. They're trying to make a member of their own party look bad by trying to shut down the government. And McCarthy, who really, as we all know, really badly wanted to be Speaker of the House, that even after he failed 13 times, he still tried again. Uh, and he has no control over his caucus when that's his job. Granted, I don't know how you could have control over the Freedom Caucus, but it's his job to. And now he's opened impeachment proceedings into Joe Biden, not because he actually believes in it, not because he believes that it will be good for the Republican Party in keeping the House, winning the White House in 2024, but because he wants to keep his job as Speaker of the House and the Freedom Caucus is forcing him to open these impeachment hearings into just about nothing. Uh, and so he's he's just letting the clowns take over and the clowns him kicked out. Matt Gates is expected any day to bring a motion to vacate the chair to the House floor. Mac- McCarthy will could be out as Speaker of the House in just a, a matter of days and he will be left with the worst legacy of any speaker because he did absolutely nothing during his term. He was a puppet speaker for the crazies the entire time, Charlie. Yeah, I think that really is important. The fact that he was put he was put in power essentially by that Freedom Caucus gave them a lot of concessions. Uh, let's move on now to no, talk, talk about the Senate, other yeah. side of the Capitol. The Senate it's crazy now, over there too. Has now finally been able to pass those military nominees that they've been trying to pass that have been blocked by Alabama Senator Tommy Tuberville. Why have they finally been able to pass these? So that's a great question because Tommy Tuberville, his objection was over uh, abortion rules in the military. And the military has not changed these rules. So why is Tuberville stepping down? Well, the short answer is he's not. But the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has used the workaround that he probably could have used months ago, but decided not to. So uh, Tuberville uh, basically stopped them from being able to pass all these nominees in one go. So now uh, Schumer is filing cloture cloture for every single nominee that Tuberville is holding up. I believe it's well over 100 at this point. And the Senate has to vote on each of these nominees one at a time. And Schumer basically says, we, we can stay here as, lo- as long as as long as you want to. We have we have nothing better to do. The House isn't sending us over anything to pass. We we've really got nothing better to do. And so you you better stay here late nights and the weekend. We're, we're going to pass these things because it's important for the country. They finally confirmed the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, the will on the way to confirming other members of the Joint Chiefs uh, in positions that are currently vacant. Charlie. Uh, let's move on now <laughs> to news from the United Auto, uh, Auto Workers, who have now gone on strike. They are seeking, I believe, a 40% increase in wages over the uh, lifespan of the new contract. The auto workers have proposed, I believe, 20% increase over the lifetime of the contract. And that is what has caused this strike. That is very bad news for Stellantis and Ford. And as GM. Well, as well as GM. And we will continue to see progress on that as it continues. Now, I will need to notice I will need to note that this is not the entirety of the United Auto Workers. They're uh, they're striking at certain plants selectively and will continue to ramp it up if negotiations do not start up. Yeah, good note to put in there, Charlie. And I think what we're seeing right now, and this is honestly, in my opinion, very good, is we're seeing uh, some very, very good labor negotiations going on right now, right? Workers are finally realizing that they're not going to put up with this because they, the the workers uh, effectively bailed out the auto industry by taking cuts when it was in uh, dire needs in the, uh, just over a decade ago. And now that these companies are making record profits, they're finally saying, it's our turn. We 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 want to see some of this money, and they're finally fighting for it, and that is great news. And a lot, it's not the only uh, strikes that we've seen recently. We've seen uh, uh, the uh, actors, the SAG, SAG Astra, go on strike. We've seen uh, the Writers Guild of America go on strike. Although that seems like it could be winding down, we'll have more on that if that happens. But this is this is good news, Charlie, for for workers all around the country. 
Absolutely. Uh, let's move on now um, to Hunter Biden, who has been indicted for several gun charges. Um, this is a move done by the Republicans in an attempt to obviously loop Joe Biden into this as we head into the runoff for the 2024 election. By the way, may I remind you that if this was anyone other than Hunter Biden, that the Second Amendment would be used by the Republicans to defend whoever this would be, except it is the son of the man who they probably hate the most in the country right now, the opposition leader, Joe Biden. Yeah, I will point out, Charlie, real quick, I I think that that's accurate and Republicans definitely cheering on these charges. Let's be clear, though, at least in my opinion, these are not necessarily politically motivated charges. These were brought by special counsel David Weiss. And I do think that there is some merit to these charges, not in the way that connects it to Joe Biden, but, and obviously, if he, if Hunter Biden committed crimes, he should be prosecuted for those crimes. It looks like there's, it looks like he probably did commit these crimes. So okay, it's a good thing that he was charged. Guilty that I agree that he should be prosecuted on them. Yeah, this is not like some complicated thing. If you're guilty, or if, if you committed crimes, you should fa- you should should face punishment for those crimes. Let's move on now to some more to some local news from Seattle now, Colin. Oh boy! So there there was a cop who, going I believe roughly 70 miles an hour with no lights or sirens in a 25 mile an hour zone, and killed a a, a pedestrian. Right? Obviously bad. Then a couple days later, um, I believe assistant head of the Seattle Police Union was caught joking about the incident and basically saying that they could just reach a settlement for like $11,000 because she's she's not actually worth that much. She, Charlie, this is appalling behavior, especially for the people whose job it is to keep, uh, to keep cities and the people living in them safe, especially one of the people that leads that group of people. Oh, absolutely. And considering the disastrous consequences of what happened in 2020 for SPD and its recruitment and its reputation within the community, they do not need any more incidents like this. No, and Charlie, we're getting to the point where I feel like we can't just say it's a few bad apples. The system. I mean, I I still do think that the major the majority of the of the law enforcement in the uh, in our cities are still doing a very good job. I think there is still some bad aspects, but those bad aspects may be larger than we initially thought. Yeah, absolutely. And also, I feel like we're getting towards a point where just more and more people are going to have a fundamental distrust of the police. And that that is dangerous because they cannot really do their jobs if the people don't trust them to do it right and feel safe in the presence of police. All right, let's move on now. Again, we got a couple we got some news from a couple of politicians. Let's start with Lauren Boebert, who got kicked out of a concert for a uh, pretty interesting reason. Colin, yeah, she she was vaping and also uh, groping her male partner there at the concert. Um, it's a, a Beetlejuice event, and this is not normal public behavior, especially for anyone, especially a member of Congress. And this was this was in Denver. She was kicked out. She lied about what happened. Now there's video of all of this happening. And so here's the thing. I don't especially care that much about her, her dating life. I, I would love it if she kept if she kept it private. I would like to quickly point out that this that this is apparently a person who owns a bar that has drag shows at it, something that we know that Bobert is very, very against. So hypocrisy at its finest, Charlie. Absolutely. And, you know, I never thought I would be able to uh, group Deshaun Watson and Lauren Boebert in the same category. Oh, no, that's uh, that's, a, that's an interesting one. Um, move on to another member of Congress. This is Jennifer Wexton. Um, she this is she's a congresswoman from Virginia. She's been there since 2018, and she is now retiring, uh, I believe, at the end of her term. And this is fairly sad news because she's been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease for a few months. Her doctors have now modified it to supranuclear palsy, or what she describes as Parkinson's on steroids. She believes that she does not necessarily have a ton of time to live, Charlie. This is very sad news for 
a member of Congress or really anybody to be going through. Absolutely. And uh, one of the questions I had on that is um, this de- what, uh, what party is she affiliated with? She, she's a Democrat. Um, she won in kind of in that blue wave year in 2018, defeated by Barbara Comstock in a suburb of D.C., somewhat of a swing district, um, although yeah. tr- definitely trending blue. I would expect that the Democrats managed to hold on to her seat next election. She won it again, obviously, in 2020 and then 2022. Yeah, the reason I ask that, of course, is I imagine it will now be slightly harder for the Democrats to hold that seat now that that now that that person who I imagine would run again uh, now cannot. Yeah, absolutely. Incumbency is always a factor in House elections, uh, more so House elections than really almost any other type of elections. So I think that there's a good chance that the Democrats will manage to hold on to that seat, though. Let's talk Illinois, Charlie. Illinois has abolished cash bail. Colin, why exactly have they done that? Yeah, this is this is a really interesting one. First state to do this. And basically they're saying it's a it's not fair that the rich people can be bailed out of jail, that whether or not you can get your freedom basically comes down to whether or not you have money. And frankly, I think that that's a pretty good argument. What do you think? Yeah, I I agree. I do think that uh, allowing certain people to just be allowed to get out of their uh, sentences, essentially, with bail um, should not be allowed, particularly if some, certain other groups cannot do that. Yeah. And finally, and this is gross again, Rudy Giuliani. We've talked about that lawsuit from Dunphy against him for, for numerous instances of sexual misconduct. Well, now, uh, Cassidy Hutchinson, Charlie, if you remember her, she was the star witness for the January 6th committee. She's the one that alleged that there was ketchup on the walls, that Trump assaulted that, uh, that Secret Service agent in the, in the motorcade. Um, she is now accusing Giuliani of sexually assaulting her on January 6th. And I, I won't get, in, get fully into the details as they are really gross, but there's plenty of places you could read it. Charlie, this is not outside the character of Giuliani. These allegations, definitely credible. Yeah, and they are certainly piling up for him. Absolutely. He faces allegations of sexual assault in multiple instances, and then also he's in deep legal trouble several other ways. Obviously, he's charged with racketeering in Georgia, um, facing disbarment, and now he's being sued for not paying his legal bills, and he's almost broke. Irony, of course, is that Trump never paid him, and I doubt we'll see him sue Trump, so not looking good for uh, formerly America's mayor. Yeah, now let's move on now to the world stage, where we do have uh, some small updates from Russia and Ukraine, that conflict out in the east. The Ukrainian counteroffensive still does continue. It is getting ever slower and slower as we head into the fall and the winter. They are the Ukrainians have broken that first line of Russian defenses as they still try to move towards the sea, but they do have a long way to go to turn that yes, around. But Russia has not been able to gain ground at all, so it really does appear that this will be a war of attrition with the war n- no end in sight. Yeah, and we'll get into this more next week, Charlie, but uh, Ukrainian President uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, he was in the United States this past week um, for, or maybe, I, I believe still is in the United States for the United Nations General Assembly and now in D.C., I believe. Uh, yes, he is, and uh, we will, of course, have more on the U.N. next week. Yeah, and let's move on to that one other Big story, Charlie. It's a prisoner swap, a pretty high profile one between the United States and Iran. U.S. getting five people wrongfully detained out of uh, Iran in exchange for five uh, pri- five Iran prisoners. And I believe some money specifically t- going toward certain causes, Charlie. Uh, yes, the U.S. has unfrozen some assets for Iran. These are uh, only to be used for civilian uses, such as medical supplies and food. Uh, so this money is actually not going at all to the Iranian government for any use in things such as military terms. They can only be used for civilian purposes. Yeah, and if and if you're wondering, well, how is that going to be enforced? 
I believe that Qatar Charlie is controlling that money until Iran's using it, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, yes. Let's all right. Let's move on to sports. Yes, and another busy week in the NFL, Charlie. There, there were some games, man, in in week two. But what, which one do you want to start with, Charlie? Let's go. Let's go in order. Let's start with the uh, Thursday night game that was Eagles Vikings. Eagles got out to a huge lead at one point. I believe they led 27 to seven. Vikings did manage a little bit of a comeback. Could not get it done with an onside kick, and the Eagles go on to win. The Eagles have not looked great, but they've gotten no, they two haven't. wins. They're, they're still undefeated, and a win's yeah. a win. So if they can if they can really just get playing the way we know they can, I think they will again be the one seed in the NFC. However, the 49ers have looked great recently. Yeah, and I feel like there were a few too many fumbles for uh, the Eagles. Uh, Kirk Cousins, though, on the other side of the ball looked really good, um, shockingly, given that it was a Thursday night game. But he he, he did look good. Vikings 0-2, though, which is confusing. Yes, the Vikings were, just could not hold on to the football. Yep. Yep. Is, it, right. is it panic time in Minnesota? Absolutely, it's panic time. We'll see what happens against the Chargers. We'll talk about the Chargers in a minute because that's not going well either. But it, it no, it, it it's panic time. All right, let's talk about some of these other matches from this morning, uh, from the morning slate of games. Let's get to the Seahawks first. Seahawks did not look great in the first half against the Lions. Did come back uh, thanks to a pick six and ended up winning the game in overtime. Uh, what way. are your thoughts so far on the Seahawks season so far? Ooh, where, where to start? I mean, I understand first half. They were getting banged up left and right just in terms of injuries. Um, DK Metcalf had to leave for a, for a time. Uh, Reek Woolen had to leave. But still, I think a pretty impressive win on the road in Detroit, who is a very, very hyped-up team right now. Um, I thought that the Lions still looked decent, all things considered. But the Ox, the Ox looked better. Geno Smith played really well, except for one really confusing play at the end of the game where – he would not throw the ball away and cost his team like 20 yards. Uh, and that really helped set up a field goal for the Lions to send it to overtime. That, that's why it got to overtime in the first place, arguably. But I think that the Seahawks, I don't know if it, is it fair to say that they're back. I don't know. They get the, the Panthers next week, the Giants next week. What, what good teams do, they beat bad teams. See if they can do that. Another, another one of the games from this morning that I want to focus on Bengals, another 0-2 start. They lost to the Ravens. Ravens looked good. They did lose Odell Beckham Jr. Um, This season is confusing me again. And I think the other big morning game was Kansas City and Jacksonville. That was supposed to be high-scoring game, big shootout, two really good teams. It was just not. Kansas City ended up winning 17-9. Jacksonville just looked downright awful at times. Uh, the yeah. Chiefs did not look great either. They do have uh, Chris Jones and Travis Kelsey back, which should seriously help them. In the afternoon Their offense, game, though, just it, did not look good. I mean, neither did the Jaguars. They couldn't get in the end zone. But th- that Chiefs offense looked bad. I'm starting. To, I I am starting to get concerned. Yes, and looking uh, looking elsewhere, the um, Anthony Richardson is at, with, uh, left the game with a concussion against the Texans after two solid rushing touchdowns. And in the afternoon games, Denver started off great, melted down, got a miracle Hail Mary, and then didn't complete the two-point conversion. There was, I understand, a pass interference call uh, that should not should have been called was not, but you should not find yourself in that position in the first place. No. Yeah, I want to go back, touch on just a couple of those games that you mentioned. Uh, the Bengals, what's happening? They've looked terrible in all of the games that they've played so far. Genuinely, what's going on? I mean, I mean the st- Ravens have looked good, but yeah, no, it's it's been bad. I'm I'm concerned there too. Some of these big juggernauts that we thought would continue to be juggernauts just haven't looked great so far. You mentioned uh, that Colts Texans game, Charlie. I've been pretty impressed with both of the with both of these young quarterbacks so far this season that were playing in this game. Uh, it, uh, obviously, unfortunate that Richardson had to leave, but uh, that he looked great. I thought that Stroud looked pretty good as well. Yeah, I think the two of them have been very impressive. I think arguably more so impressive than Bryce Young. Yeah, no, I, I would I would tend to agree with that. We'll get to the Monday night games 
Second, another quarterback that impressed me, although a young quarterback in a losing effort, although, was uh, Jordan Love. He looked pretty good. Obviously, Packers melted down at the end, but he impressed me, and the Falcons have looked good as well, which is kind of surprising. But I think that these both of these teams could be better than we thought that they were originally. I, I certainly agree. A quarterback, whoever, who did not look good at all was Justin Fields. Could the Bears, Charlie, go 0-17? It is possible. They, I doubt they it. They're bad. Maybe. They're bad, bad. And then Fields made some bad comments as well. He certainly like, did. Not he look tried to good. blame it on the coaches. You don't do that. Not publicly. No, absolutely not. Yeah. A couple of other games. Bills beat the Raiders. Charlie, don't think that there's much to talk about there. It was a route like we all expected. Bills are going to be fine. Raiders never were going to be fine in the first place. And then Titans, Chargers, Charlie, what's happening with the Chargers? It's so yeah, bad. When the Chargers things. Should Brandon stay? I mean, we've talked about this extensively. Yes. About should, how we think he should be fired. Him already. Will he be fired? No. At what point do you think that they fire him? If they lose two more in a row, do they fire him? Probably. I, mean, I, mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's I would well, argue fire him now after what happened last year. but Yeah. Charlie, I do think that the Rams, though, I think that they're a better team than we gave them credit for last week. Obviously now trading away Cam Akers, but they, they in a way went. Freaking to- Nakua. Yeah, that was a good game. The Rams certainly did have a chance to win. They did not. I certainly do think they are a better team than we all expected. Getting to Sunday night. I, I will add, by the way, that was absolutely a first down by that uh, Patriots offensive lineman. Yes, it was. It was. Uh, however, the Patriots, again, find an agonizing way to lose a football game. Another one-score loss they lose to the Dolphins. The Dolphins looked gr- pretty good. Yeah, two quick comments on this game. First of all, the Patriots are once again painfully mediocre. They have been since Brady left, and you can't really go anywhere as a team from there. Second of all, the Dolphins are absolutely legit if Tua can stay healthy. They are as good as anyone I've watched play in the AFC so far this season. I do want to mention that the Broncos, um, it was it was bad. Again, Russ blew it in the second half. He was nowhere to be found. And Commander's defense, do you not know how to, how to defend a Hail Mary? When given the chance, you knock it down. You don't try to intercept it. That's like basic knowledge, Charlie. Absolutely. Um, and then as for the Monday night games, these were pretty boring. Absolutely. Um, Saints, they come away with a slight win over the Panthers. And then Steelers, they beat the Browns. On The Browns suffer a huge loss. Nick Chubb out for at least the season and a devastating injury that, I mean, they wouldn't even show the replay on the on the ABC broadcast. It was that bad, Charlie. Oh, this was just an absolutely horrific injury. So the Browns had now signed Nick Chubb as a replacement. So I had now signed um, uh, Kareem Hunt for the injured Nick Chubb. Um, The Giants, Charlie, they stood it out miserably, found a way to come back and win. Do you think that that gives them some momentum? Daniel Jones definitely had a better second half. No, this team is bad, and we need to stop pretending that they will be good. Well, I'll just do that. And then finally, the Cowboys. Are they better than we all thought they were? I would say probably. That defense is amazing right now. We'll see if they keep it together. That offense can be even mediocre uh, at this point, just considering how great that defense has played. Yeah. Also, I know when to make a fool of myself. Uh, Dak Prescott, I said he was going to have 20 interceptions this year. I think he has zero so far. So good for him. All right, and now let's get to uh, the standings from our uh, our fantasy league, should we call it. Sure. Uh, we each got eight points this week, which puts me at 15 total and you at 17 total. Um, Charlie, you've still gotten absolutely nothing from your bottom from your bottom four teams, whereas my bottom four teams, I've gotten the combined uh, five points, but it doesn't matter because you're still in the lead. My top performers continue to perform. Let's look at college football now. Colorado survived just a very big scare against Colorado State, thanks to 
Colorado State committing, I believe, 145 yards worth of penalties. Yeah, no, it was uh, it was bad. Also, please, Colorado college football fans, stop threatening someone's life because he committed a foul on your favorite player. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. It's not and, that hard. Yeah, real quick comment on the Pac-12. All eight of the ranked teams from this past week, uh, Washington, Washington State, USC, UCLA, Oregon, Oregon State, Utah, Colorado, they all won again, all remain ranked. Conference play, Charlie, is going to be wild in the Pac-12. That starts this week. Yeah, this is going to be nuts. Yeah, Uh, and then Georgia, Charlie, and Alabama, neither looked especially good against weak opponents. They both did win. Yeah, they, they really struggled. They did not. I don't believe that they went down in the uh, in the rankings, but no, I, I do not believe so. It looked. It just looked awful. Um, let's move on now away from football to the WNBA playoffs. Colin, I'll let you take this one. Yeah. So the first round of the WNBA playoffs has concluded. First round, all best of three series, and all of the top four seeds. Advance. Not really any surprises. The Las Vegas Aces. They won. Uh, in uh, two though a sweep over the Chicago Sky. No surprise. That's a stacked team. Liberty had a little bit of trouble against the Mystics, but still won both of those games. Um, although the second one in overtime. Uh, Connecticut, the Sun, they held off the Lynx. They won that series in three games, and then the Dallas Wings won their series against the Atlanta Dream in two games. So it now goes to the semifinals, where it's a best of five. The um, Liberty, they have not been to the second round of the WNBA playoffs since 2015. So they're, they're back, and they, they look good. Yes, they do. Let's move on now to the MLB. This is going to be wild as we enter the end of the season. That a, that NL wild card heating up. The AL West, oh my god. This might be the greatest division race I have ever seen. I'm biased as a Mariners fan. But this is insane. I've never seen anything like it. As of this taping, three teams within half a game. One of them wins the division. Other one is a wild card. Other one probably out. It's going to be a wild ride. Let's do it. So let's do it. And Mariners Mariners will play the Astros and the Rangers in all of their remaining games. It's heart attack time. Yes, it is. And... uh to end, the, to end the episode, we have an update from Formula One. Someone other than Verstappen actually won. I can't believe Wait, it. Wait, really? Yeah, Carlos Sainz took a win in Singapore. Max Verstappen starting 11th after getting knocked out in Q2 by Liam Lawson, the rookie at uh, Fatari. He was followed up by Lando Norris and Lewis Hamilton. George Russell was in fourth, a uh, third, sorry, before crashing out with a few corners to go. But... With the last few laps of the race, four cars within a second of each other. We finally had some tight racing this season, and I'm hoping that this is scenes of the future of Formula One in the years to come. Uh, but I think that'll do it for this episode. Yeah, there's been a shorter episode in the last couple of weeks, and we're still trying to find that happy medium and how long our episode should be. Let, let, let us know in, uh, what length of episodes you want and what in particular you want us to focus on more but that's going to do it for this episode so subscribe episodes every single wednesday wherever you listen to podcasts the website cctalks.net has everything you need to know about the show you can call us with your questions at 360-389-2630 again that's 360-389-2630 or, or of course you can leave a comment as well on one of our social platforms speaking of which you can follow us on twitter at cc talks podcast and follow charlie at CC Talks Charlie. For our producer Morris, production designer Zach, and sound designer Drake, I'm Colin. And I'm Charlie. See you next week.